Hello and welcome. In today's video we're going back to the bizarre tests that only this channel does, and we're going to see which emulators can run games, preferably at 1080p, using only the integrated graphics card. To give some context, let's talk about the GPU used. Not even AMD's own website gives many details. They just call it Radeon Graphics and say it has two graphics cores running at 2200 MHz. It's possible to customize the amount of VRAM, which will be deducted from the total RAM in the setup. In this case, I dedicated 8GB out of the available 32GB to the integrated GPU. It's an RDNA 3 GPU and to complement that, the RAM modules in my PC are two DDR5 sticks at 6000 mega transfers. In the test, we use the dedicated graphics card only for OBS recording, avoiding any kind of performance drop when capturing gameplay. All other emulator settings were configured to use only the integrated GPU. We tested from PlayStation 2 emulators, which are already well optimized all the way to Shad PS4, which is a PlayStation 4 emulator and demands a lot from the GPU. Let's see how each one performed. Starting with PCSX2, we kept the focus at 1080p, with the API set to automatic, since PCSX2 handles that very well. We decided to disable FXA, because that kind of anti-aliasing can weigh heavily on integrated GPUs, which are meant to run games with minimal details. In the end, we had fully fluid gameplay, with 60 FPS all the time, even with the GPU running almost at 100%. It's worth remembering that Gran Turismo 4 is one of the most beautiful games on the console, and its hardware demand is considered high. On Dolphin, we split the test between GameCube and Wii games. The initial setup was the same, integrated GPU doing all the work and the RTX used only for recording, keeping the resolution at 1080p. We started with the GameCube, running Time Splitter's Future Perfect, on a relatively dense map with all bots active plus one player. As we can see, despite some minor variations in frame time and occasional performance drops that don't compromise the experience, we have a solid gameplay running at a constant 60 FPS. Resource usage is low, except for the GPU, which was already expected in this scenario. On the Wii we went further, with the last story, using a texture pack and 60 FPS mod, also at 1080p. I have to admit, when I tested this game on my GTX 970, I had even more problems than on the integrated GPU. In the future I might bring a comparison between older dedicated GPUs and integrated ones, if you'd like. Here we couldn't maintain a fixed 60 FPS, but the integrated GPU still held up decently. Anyone who wants to play under these conditions would just need to lower the quality a bit to keep a constant 60 FPS even with the texture pack enabled. Still on Dolphin, we tested Call of Duty Black Ops this time without texture packs, just the game at 1080p and native settings, including the original 30fps cap. Aside from small stutters during shader compilation, the game ran really well, with a steady 30fps even during explosions and particle effects. So if your focus is Dolphin and PCSX2, you probably won't have any issues. Next up was Simu, and running Breath of the Wild at 1080p with everything maxed out is impossible on the integrated GPU, but with some tweaks it's playable. To get something acceptable, not a fixed 30 FPS, but still within playable range, I had to reduce draw distance and set shadows to minimum. Of course, I could have left the quality at medium and lowered the resolution, but since the focus here is 1080p, I chose to keep it that way. So yes, it is possible to play Breath of the Wild on the integrated GPU. Moving on to Xbox 360 emulation, things got trickier. The emulator is still at an early stage of development. I tested Gears of War 2 without changing the effects, and as you can see, the experience wasn't great, averaging 18 to 20 FPS. But since I'm stubborn, I decided to cut the visual features, turned off anti-aliasing, blur, and isotropic filter, etc. And then the experience became closer to the original console, reaching its native 30 FPS. For a lot of people this might sound good, but for this specific game, running at 60 FPS would be practically mandatory. Still on Xenia Canary, I also tested Forza Motorsport 4. For anyone wanting to play with the same visual fidelity shown here, you can follow the video. And if you want the already modified ROM, just reach out to me on Discord. The game runs natively at 30 FPS on the console, but here we manage nearly 40 FPS without sacrificing graphics. The remaining problems are from the emulator itself, not from the integrated GPU. On our PCS3, the problems got more serious. The game chosen was Tekken 6 which is relatively light for the console, but it already caused headaches. Right on the first run, the game crashed just for using the integrated GPU. 
After clearing the shaders, I managed to run it, but after two full matches it threw a Vulkan API error and closed. This problem still happens randomly on RPC S3, but usually it takes longer to occur, not less than 5 minutes like it did here. Since it has to compile the entire shader cache from scratch, I decided not to test other games. Metal Gear Solid 4, for example, can take up to 4 hours just to compile shaders. Having to do that on the integrated GPU and then repeat it on the dedicated one completely pushed me away from testing more games on RPC S3. And to wrap up, we moved on to Nintendo Switch emulators. But before that, don't forget to leave a like to support the channel and help bring more tests like this. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing to keep up with the weekly content. If you want to buy original games while saving a lot, check out Instant Gaming, the digital store that sells games for various platforms, such as PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. Get games of all genres with discounts of up to 95%. You'll also find a variety of gift cards and credits for other services. You can pay for your order through your credit card on a website with a 4.7 rating on Trustpilot. You're buying games directly from Instant Gaming, not from other retailers. If you encounter any issues, Instant Gaming offers 24-7 support. And this month, Instant Gaming is offering a special discount on Wuchang, with a price at least $10 cheaper than on Steam, making it the lowest price ever for the game. What are you waiting for to save? Links in the description. The first emulator I tested was Eden. Unfortunately, the results weren't great. I reached out to the development team, and they told me that they're not running tests nor do they have conclusive data regarding potential performance issues on integrated GPUs. That's why I'll be showing here the tests made on version RC2, but it's important to point out that these results may already be outdated, since RC3 has just been released. I plan to run new tests with that version next week. As you can already see in the background, I tested Bayonetta 3, but without success. The game doesn't run even at the native handheld resolution, nor at 75% of handheld. It can reach over 50 FPS, but when moving the character, especially when rotating the camera, serious problems and big performance drops appear. I also tried using EDS 3, but that only completely broke the game. I also tested Mario Kart 8. I made several attempts, but after the track presentation the emulator would simply freeze and nothing appeared. As you can see, the whole process was recorded, from settings to gameplay attempt, but unfortunately I couldn't run the game on my integrated GPU. Maybe you'll have more luck, but in my tests it didn't work. Then I moved on to Citroen, under the same conditions. Here I didn't enable anti-aliasing, as recommended for this version, precisely because this feature is too heavy for an integrated GPU. Even so, it wasn't enough to get gameplay. It almost seemed like it was going to run, but as soon as I moved the character, the game became extremely slow. Again I tried Mario Kart 8. As you can see, this was the configuration used. After loading, the game actually runs, unlike Eden. After shader compilation, the frame rate stabilizes and we manage to keep 60 FPS. But with so many issues up to this point, I had to drop 1080p and run the game at 720p, that is, in handheld mode. I already considered this a good result for this GPU, especially because my CPU isn't even from the G-Line, which has more robust graphics. But I wanted to push it further. I disabled handheld mode and tried running at 1080p. To my surprise, we actually managed stable 60 FPS gameplay, even with FSR 2 enabled on ultra performance mode. I also tested Pokemon Scarlet. In docked mode, at 1080p, it reached 20 FPS. In handheld mode, it stayed around 35 FPS. Despite some graphical issues, like scene distortions and objects appearing glitched from time to time, I'd say we had a decent gameplay experience. And of course, I couldn't skip testing Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. At 1080p, we didn't get the result we'd want. The game fluctuated between 20 and 24 FPS. A lot of people might consider that playable, but for me it's out of the question, especially because of the input delay, even for the most basic commands. When I reduced it to 75% of docked resolution, I managed an average between 30 and 40 FPS, but soon the frame time became very unstable. To fix that, I preferred locking the game at 30 FPS using MSI Afterburner. That way the fluidity was decent and the input delay disappeared. So yes, it is possible to run Nintendo Switch games on the integrated GPU. Lastly, just out of curiosity, I tested Shad PS4. I ran Bloodborne at 480p and the result was this horror show you're watching. The game struggles to stay near 30 FPS. There are severe visual problems with all polygons showing, even at low resolution, plus parts of the physics are completely broken. Maybe it could run some 2D games, but in 3D it's completely out of the question, 
at least with this GPU. And that's today's video. Let me know in the comments if this content was useful for you. Thanks a lot for watching, and see you in the next video.